target. That's scary enough. Now imagine that same aircraft firing lasers, multiple lasers at the same time and hitting wow. multiple targets at the same time. Yeah. That's the advantage. You can hit let's say if it if it can track sixteen to thirty two or a hundred different objects, it can fire at all of those objects at the same time. That's yeah. something that a lot of people don't fathom. It's it's not like you're aiming the aiming the weapon and fire and aiming the weapon and fire. It's not like a like a plasma rifle or a rail gun or something like that these things can actually uh, just like you do when they draw images like if you've ever been to stone mountain or if you've ever watched the laser light show when it draws these images it's firing one laser and it's yeah. drawing all of this stuff and that's a similar way that the multiple targeting solution um i, I think it actually is called uh, mts um w would be incorporated into the system and it would actually in, instead of firing at one target and then giving warning to all the other targets, yeah. you just hit all the targets at the same time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and you know through through spinning prisms, laser, uh, spinning prisms, mirror displays, things like that, you can direct that beam any number of directions, uh, yeah. and and create once again, even even as it showed in the document, uh, create more than one. UFO, uh, create more than one obstacle for the missile to follow. You could create a fleet. You could create an entire invading fleet for exactly. the the enemy radar to pick up before you ever get there. That's right. Look at the ASA. There's a whole fleet of them. <laughs> yeah. We've heard those words before on a certain UFO video. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, that very much may, may be what that was. But um, you know, the, the other advantage of a laser-based system first off is it's it's not like munitions where you're going to run out you, you don't run out of ammunition so uh, aircraft that takes off will you know the pilot is not going to have to worry about i've only got 160 rounds left i got to be careful you know do some you know short bursts or whatever no let them have it you know the the system can just keep firing lasers the other cool thing too is the laser is almost instantaneous on the battlefield so when you fire it hits the target like instantly. So you're not, there's no delay. There's no, the other aircraft cannot put up chaff cannot put out flares. There's nothing really the other aircraft can do except yeah. for some jamming type system. That's it. Um, so it's a whole new ball game and it's going to be a game changer for, uh, you know, for modern, modern warfare. Whoever is the leader of this technology is going to rule the skies and what have you. So I'm, I'm glad we're on board with it because it looked like for a while we weren't really coming out with much. Uh, it's getting kind of scary, but um, it's, it's here and we're going to, we're going to see it. The other, the one thing too, is that some of the laser systems that are being utilized are, are firing infrared type lasers. Yes. And, and with the infrared laser, the difference being is that you won't see the beam. Um, I had, I actually have an infrared laser um the, oh yeah i was going to do that i was going to set the thing up um so when whenever you fire it you have to be extremely careful because you don't see the you don't even know it's firing um it's really interesting when you're at a mall and someone's irritating you and you fire the laser while they're eating their lunch or whatever and they, they start slapping their neck because they feel the, the burning of their neck yeah not that i ever did anything like that but um <laughs> yeah <laughs> the, these things happen so um, the pilot will not see this beam going like it like when you see the videos depicting what this would look like they show these laser beams firing across whatever and that's just so it makes sense but the, you're not going to see any of that so there's going to be very difficult to find out where the lasers are coming from yeah you know of course you know they can they can figure out a way to track that but um it's it's it will be a very different war um when that system is utilized um, and you know, we've already used it to some degree, you know, as far as taking out drones and things like this. But um, once they incorporate other targeting solutions into the system, and you know, if you can shoot a hundred targets at one time instantaneously from one aircraft, and if you have sixteen aircraft yeah. in the area, and you can program all sixteen aircraft to pro fire at the exact same time, that would be a devastating devastating thing to see well and and you know once again why why that russian general uh began reusing the the word wunderwaffe you know the idea of wonder weapons the idea of um thing things beyond what we have conceived 
and yeah. and you know more more than just beyond what we have conceived beyond what we thought that we would apply in the battlefield yeah yeah there are there are some scary things on the drawing board there are some scary things that are in development um what's one the, of the things that worries you the most mike uh the utilization of a certain weapon that's called the uh, don't do it if you can't do it yeah, I, I, was I love going, you too much, doing? man. Don't do it if you can't do it. Yeah, I won't. But the, but there is a, there is a system in play, and, it, and it's, believe it or not, it's derived off of Star Trek. And Star Trek had a um, a weapon system that was a bluff, or was thought to be a bluff, where Kirk was saying that the uh, I can't remember what they called it, but the the Enterprise would actually uh, turn into some giant like laser ball thing and would just fire lasers in all kinds of different areas or phasers in the case of the Star Trek. Yeah. Um, but th this system is something similar to that in that it would be a ball structured type drone, if you want to call it that, that would be dropped into an area. And as it's dropping, kind of like if you were dropping a bomb, it would be able to independently fire Multi at multiple targets, just like it would if it was an aircraft. But this can be dropped from, say, 50, 60,000 feet and on its way down. I mean, it's a one-way trip. It would it would take out as many targets as necessary. Um, and there's, you know, it's 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 an end-all kind of kind of deal for that. You know, and the the advantage to this again is you're going to cut out collateral damage. You're you're not going to have situations where we had to, you know, take out somebody and he happened yeah, to be like yeah. in, in the case of Israel and Hamas where they're you know hiding in hospitals and schools and stuff like this you can actually they can be in a hospital they can be in a school we you know wouldn't really matter but once the person is able to be targeted it's it's an instantaneous thing you're done if you're going to go against people i think there's yeah. a line there as far as once it transitions into people firing at people with lasers you, you, I think you can probably sense it if you just think about it for just a second. We've been talking about firing lasers at, at weapon systems like at drones, incoming missiles, things of that nature. When you start thinking about firing a laser and hitting people, the the bad thing is is that it really sinks in and it's kind of a different thought process you're having to go through when you think about it. But the advantage is is that you're not going to have the collateral damage that you do with any type of munition system. So. You know, you, you you don't have a a kill radius or something like that. You would pin, pinpoint that one target and take it out, and that I think is much more humane. But it's going to be a hard pill to swallow when it first happens. Well, and uh, you know, we have we have already seen. I mean, of course, we've uh, we've seen drones used to great success for such things. Um, mm -hmm. We have seen un other unmanned weapon systems used to great success for such things. Uh, that that began in in the Gulf War in the first Gulf War, that was really the first tech war, you know. Mm -hmm. That that I mean, we had some laser guided systems and sidewinders, things like that. Previous to that, you know, I want to say the sidewinder, actually another one from Raytheon, uh, came out. I want to say the F four Phantom may have been one of the first oh. planes to utilize the sidewinder air to air missile. Yeah. That's an old um, old missile. It's been around for a while, but it's a beauty. It's it's just it's it's a it's a a stable platform. I yeah. mean the dynamics of it's just wonderful. The the other things we have now are these these cruise missiles that can be fired and actually hit a specific individual yep. sitting in a specific seat yeah. in a car. Yeah. Uh, and that's yeah, I think that's the blade one that's with the one that has the swords that come out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which sounds kind of scary, but but it it perform quite well so and, and uh, you know it is it is one of those um they're they're out there you know mm -hmm. we we have these platforms they exist uh where is it yeah there it is the Stormbreaker. yeah 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 um yeah. and you know these these things are uber precise they're out there and uh, for me, it's the fact of, and and I don't want to. I'm not an alarmist guy, you know that. I I mean, heck, I I utilize weak AI all the time. I'm all I'm all about AI and the utilization of AI. Yeah. Me too. However, I will never forget the day that me and Stephen Bishop, the former co-host of Dudes and Beer, sat in my living room. 
and watched a man get grenaded by a drone on U.S. soil. Um, that was the Dallas shooter, the, the Dallas police shooter. They had him cornered. And then say what you want, folks. Whenever it is an unmanned vehicle bringing in a grenade, that's a drone strike. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. That is a coordinated drone strike. Say Absolutely. whatever you like. <laughs> You're not yeah, going to convince had, me any robots. less. Yeah, we had robots that were, you know, battling, uh, you know, bank robbers and stuff. There were people that were entrenched with kid, you know, kidnapping situations where this, this, this yeah. five foot tall robot with tracks would just bust down the door and go in with either. I've, I've seen one with a flamethrower on it, and I thought that was a little bit weird. But it's a little uh, much. It's yeah. It's a, <laughs> But you would know negotiation. About you wouldn't know about farming and running, would you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but 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 that's just it. Like the day yeah. of that is already here. It is the day. Yeah. The day of the litmus test of what will people put up with is already well gone by, and yeah. and unfortunately, people put up with a lot. People put well, up with. People being pulled out of their homes without warrants looking for people. Right. People have put up with so many things. And yeah. sadly, I think that the day, I think the day that the bad AI people are worried about, because, because you know, there's definitely bigger AIs out there. There's definitely military AIs. There's definitely yeah. some AIs that do some really big war games, whopper style problem solving, you know? Um, yeah. And There's a real interesting concept that just came out, and it's, uh, it's something that we brought up in a meeting last last October, I think it was. Um, I'm trying to remember what was happening at the time. But uh, w during the meeting, we were discussing the utilization of AI into various agencies and what have you. And one of the things mm. that we started to struggle with was AI in law enforcement. See, AI being utilized at, say, NSA, CSS, uh, you know, NRO, NGA, any of these any of these military agencies, as it relates to, you know, tasking satellites, uh, determining what things are, blah, 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 that'll be an amazing thing. But where it becomes questionable, in other words, AI will be programmed with the rules of war. Yeah. Now, when you do the same program as far as the rules of war and rules of engagement and as it relates to police officers, it's quite a bit different. It's not the same. Yep. Yep. It's so different than it is for for wartime and, and for, you know, all of those scenarios that we could possibly think of. Absolutely. So, and and but, that – go, go, the please. Question, hang on a second. The biggest question that was brought up that, that I kind of posed was what if – the AI determines that because we see this a lot where the police officer is actually at fault. What does it do? Yeah. What decision is it going to make? Um, and they're like, what? I said, I said, it has to go through a certain, a certain test to determine whether or not it should do something or suggest something. So all of the first AI is going to going to be, you know, suggesting what should be done or actually doing it if it's, yeah. you know, something not super yeah. important. But when it comes down to AI, look in a, say an AI robot is at a crime scene or something's going down or kidnapping or whatever, and then they send in the robot and the robot starts to go in there and then some cop messes up, you know, he, the, the robot will make a decision that might not be in the favor of, of law enforcement. You know? That's so, right. That's right. You know, it was a weird, weird scenario of events, but but yeah, I've seen it. You know, you see it played out periodically where cops are covering up for each other, whatever. AI won't do that. Yeah, <laughs> it just it's not going to do that. Yeah. Um, so I, I I'm very curious as to how that that's going to play out. And that's a good thing. I'm okay with AI not carrying on the corruption, not not continuing the corruption. Um, yeah. The issue comes comes in. Uh, the want of short circuit, the want of circumvention, the want of, yeah. you know, cutting human out of the loop because we are the flaw, yeah, you know, that's true. Um, yeah. and and of course that comes with programming. And and the the, the one thing I, I always bring up, we've got about seven minutes left here, Mike, but mm -hmm. um, the one thing I always bring up, of course, is Tay, you know, 
and and it it all depends any ai even even the the big thinking military ones um all get their information from a specified data pool right you know right. um and depending on what you're feeding it is what you're going to get out now you start feeding that that law enforcement ai all kinds of other things all kinds of other cases um who knows how fast it may may start the racial profiling well keep keep in mind too the, you know the, the other picture here is um because tay you, became talk, racist real quick yeah, that yeah, that little exactly. girl had to be shut down within hours dude within yeah. hours because AI was making up things as well i mean yeah the, the, some answers that you get back are, you know are not exactly factual <laughs> well yeah, and so. ai's left by themselves over the weekend that create their own language that's right that their programmers right. didn't give them they were that's just right. like you know it's a whole lot faster this right here yeah you and, know and they were writing their they were writing code and creating subroutines for their for their own things to run so they could become more efficient yeah so they could actually you know multitask because chat gpt for example was being bogged down ridiculously um, and the people were trying to write the algorithms and all of the different subroutines necessary to make it, to keep it efficient. Um, but then they, someone said, hey, just let AI do it. It seems to be doing okay. But when it did hit, it did make itself more efficient, but at the same time, it, it kind of allowed for some leeway as, as far as uh, being very truthful in answers. So the racist thing was coming out. Remember they shut down the Microsoft version and yep. some other things it's quite, quite – you know, it's it's humorous to a degree, but it, there's some very serious implications that that come out of this. Well, um, it, it's it's one of those, you know, um, every single time I hear that the UN has not passed legislation on robots in the battlefield. Yeah, that they have still not passed legislation. It's up for vote. We are passing legislation, like. It will be too, Isaac Asimov's rules. <laughs> it will be too late. It will be too late. It will That's be. the thing is that they aren't robots yet. They're just drones. They're just drones with legs and arms. That's all they are right now is drones. And that's all right. But it's a yeah. it's it's not a far step between drone and robot. That's true. And yeah, and true. once you don't have that hey this is definition of robot and this is what you legally have to have internationally or else it's against protocols um mm. then yeah who's setting up the fact that the asimov rules have to exist at all yeah. nobody nobody's yeah. setting up the asimov rules and and then that's a problem yeah uh, you know so they do they do incorporate uh, you know the main rule which is you know yes. never to cause harm to humans um but at the same time a AI vehicle that's driving down the road. Now, this has been brought up many times where the AI vehicle would have to make a decision. Yep. Do I hit the old woman that's about to die or do I hit the kid that's you know got the future ahead of him? But well, it would be easier to hit the kid, but I have to make the decision to hit the older woman and, and it has to choose between the two. But here's the answer that Elon Musk gave. Yeah, Elon Musk said that is not even an issue inside what they're programming. And he was asked why. He says the vehicle is to stop. That is how it's programmed. Yeah. It's not programmed to make a decision to kill one person versus another. It's programmed to just stop. If someone gets killed in, in because of that, then that is just, you know, it's just that's how the, the cards were played and the dice were rolled. Yeah. Um, but the card's just programmed to stop. It's yeah, so, yeah. Oh, the the something. car is programmed to cease progress, not to choose yeah. option A or option B. Exactly, um, exactly. Because so otherwise, thought, yes, that would be that would be premeditated and murderous. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe maybe premeditated in a moment, but you definitely made a real quick decision as to who you were going to cushion your blow with. You there know, some crazy Perry Mason moments in court of somebody trying to determine how much insurance should pay. Well, well yeah. No, I was just about to say we have like three minutes left. But that was that was one of the things that for the last many years when I would work conferences here in town um, mm -hmm. that came to local hotels, things like that, where I sat in on tons of insurance conferences, things like yep. that. Automated cars and drones were the two biggest hot topics. They were mm -hmm. the two biggest. Hot, what do you do when a drone falls on somebody's head? 
What do you what do you do when a drone falls out of the sky and lands on somebody with a package in it? Mm-hmm. Cuz it's being delivered. You know, what do you what do you do when the automated car hits an automated car and they both have a passenger in it? Who's at fault? The, the funny thing is is the answer is the same <laughs> answer as as we have current kind of currently on the yeah. bus. Yeah. Oh no, no, absolutely. Like it's it's the same answer, but it's one of those neither one of those automated cars have a human being behind the wheel. <laughs> That's right. That's so right. who are you going to sue? That's right. Who's, who are you yeah. suing? <laughs> <laughs> that Here's, creates a problem for insurance companies. They really like suing people. It's yep. it's kind of one of the ways they make their grip. So, <laughs> <laughs> and and you know, hey, hate Raytheon all you want. Um, I, I I'm trying to think of other uses for you know the the cryonic eye that looks at. Heat signatures. Maybe we'll have some nice predator detection. Come oh. come the day of the predator invading oh. the planet. Sick or something like that. You, you know, there's so many different things as far as the, the thermal type imaging and. Oh, and it's true. It's true. Layer uh, protective yeah. imaging. So yeah. It's, well, it's, it's, in in the last minute here, Mike, let everybody know where they can go to follow your work, where they can go to keep up with five by five news, all that kind of great stuff, bud. The, the easiest place is, is going to be between YouTube and X. So between X, uh, X is where I'll probably be more active as far as uh, talking to people and answering questions and getting in arguments and stuff like that. Um, and then back over to YouTube, which is where I'll present, um, you know, different stories that I might be working on at the time of uh, this last year has been kind of crazy. Uh, but this new year is uh, starting off kind of crazy. So uh, you'll be able to see uh, several of the cases that I'm working on, and there should be a TV show that be coming out probably in October. Nice. So look forward to that. Nice. I cannot wait. Cannot wait. We'll have to have you back on, of course, to promote that, buddy. Sure. Better, you better. Well, better hey, <laughs> thank you so much for the time as always, my friend. Take care of yourself. I'll be sharing links, all that kind of good stuff. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Take care, man. Um, thank you. Always a pleasure talking with Mike Turber. He is an absolutely amazing individual. Stop on by, follow his work at 5x5 Five Five News. He is always on point. Um, once again, the topic uh, that we have covered tonight with laser technology, we, we have been chasing this hound since probably about a year or so after the videos first launched um, with go fast gimbal things like that so um it's it's great to see articles talking about that all kinds of things because this is something that we have brought up time and time and time again that so many people do not seem to look at when they are investigating this stuff so um thank you so much as always mike for coming on stay tuned through our commercial break folks when we come back we will be joined by dr rita louise to talk about the gentle and well, sometimes not so gentle, art of mindful awareness. We will be right back after this. The Curious Realm Podcast is your source for the latest and greatest news and events in the world of the paranormal, esoteric, and forbidden knowledge. And there is no better way to spark the conversation than with items from the Curious Realm store. Choose from fan favorites like hoodies, mouse pads, coffee mugs, and more. Buy books and items from your favorite Curious Realm guests. Get your hands on the latest gear for paranormal investigations and experiments we discuss on the show. Open your web browser and stop on by the Curious Realm store at CuriousRealm.com forward slash store to buy the latest Curious Realm wear and out of this world gifts for yourself, your family, or a mind that you want to open. That website again is CuriousRealm.com forward slash score.
Hello, everybody, and thank you for hanging out through that short commercial break. Thank you so much to our sponsors. They are the folks that help make things happen here, especially True Him Science. They are our friends right here in Austin, Texas. Stop on by TrueHimScience.com. They are your source for amazing CBD oil. Uh, they are the only CBD I have found personally countrywide that actively has terpene profiles. Amazing stuff made through an alchemical spigeric process where every part of the plant is used. Seeds, stems, root, everything. Stop on by and check them out. TrueHimScience.com is the website. Curious 7 is the code that you want to use to save 7% off your entire cart of $50 or more, as well as get two, count them, two 50 milligram edibles on your way out the door as well. TrueHimScience.com, Curious 7 is the code that you want to use. Our guest in this segment is the amazing Dr. Rita, Dr. Rita Louise. We will be talking about her new book, Dang! It was me all along, cultivating happiness through mindful awareness. This is one of my favorite topics, people. As you probably know, if you are a regular listener, I am consistently preaching the the doctrine of manifestation, the doctrine of, I guess nowadays, doctor, you would call it more like neurolinguistic programming, something along those lines. You know, um, it's it's pretty interesting to see how that works out and um, how you can literally change the way that your brain functions, the way that things happen in your mind. Uh, welcome to the show. Welcome back to the show. You've been a guest before, so how have you I been have. doing? But when I look at the screen, there's like only half my head. <laughs> I don't know what's <laughs> going on with that with our Skype guests. I'm so sorry. I'm like, okay, I'll just talk like this. <laughs> I'm sorry. I assure that you are in the full screen presentation over here in our system. Okay. (laughs) But But yeah, yeah, you are the second (laughs) guest to tell me that. And that is strange to me. So um, I will definitely look into that. But uh, let's let's start getting into the recent book, the newest book that you have. Um, Dang, it was me all along. I love the title. Um, because we so often forget the fact, I mean, even when it comes to ancient cultures, ancient civilizations, how many times we have lived this story, how many times we have lived this same story as humanity and just totally forgotten it. Mm-hmm. And when it when it comes to life, when it comes to psychology, when it comes to how things manifest in your life, so much of it is due to rote habit. So many things exactly. that negatively manifest in our life are due to rote habit. And we don't realize that if if we can just break that chain of of mental constriction of how we think about something, exactly how different life could be all around. Well, you know, and I want to give you a different, a, a slightly different twist on that term rote, ha- rote habit. Mm. I like to relate them or present them as like little computer viruses that are inside of us. And so when something happens, it's like it activates a little program in us and we just react like an automaton, Mm. you know, thus the rote habit. And we don't even think about it because we just make the assumption, well, this is me and this is how I respond. Yeah. But With a computer program, you can go in and rewrite the script. You can change the programming. And when that same type of situation occurs, you can have a different response to it. And that is all something that's possible. Absolutely. And and the the modern mindfulness movement. I am I am absolutely in love with because it it really is a step back and recognize yourself situation you know it it really is a understanding that so much of what we do and how we are impacted by the world around us is a consent into a system on our part um i have i have always you know, but that's part of the programming oh, you know yeah. that we just sit back and behave in a certain way you know and we can't even blame ourselves because we're not taught any different that's right 
That's right. No. And and that's just it. And I, I would love to blame our parents, but they weren't taught any different. They, they were brought into this just as crippled as we are. Mm -hmm. it, you know, and it, it is it is really interesting that, yes, um, you can start changing things by simple perception shifts. You know, simply, simply, um, inward perception shifts. Mm, yeah. You know, not yeah. necessarily external, even though the external is the stimulus, sure. but it is paying attention to what is that stimulus doing to me yes. and inside of me. And once you can start getting a handle on that, which is actually very simple because you just have to pay attention, thus mindfulness. Yeah. It's a game changer. And it is totally a game changer. No one says, oh, well, you should pay attention to it. Yeah. And and what's funny is that this is once again born of a movement that is cyclical, that has been around since the time of Marcus Aurelius, man, mm -hmm. like stoicism. The idea of do not let passion rule your day. Do not let passion rule your decision. If you're angry when a decision moment comes, take two steps back and three deep breaths and wait a few minutes before you make a decision, you mm -hmm. know, because those things are embedded in there. And then and then when something goes wrong because of that decision you made in a moment of passion, you get more passionate and you get more angry and it feeds the feedback loop. <laughs> You know, and, and and it's literally that old age as an 80s kid. The first thing I always think of, uh, not only as an 80s kid, but an addict. Um, the first thing I always think of is that old drug commercial. I work hard so I can make more money, so I can buy more cocaine, so I can work harder, so I can make more money, <laughs> so I can buy more cocaine, so I can work harder. So, you know, and it's it's that feedback loop. And we think that we need this thing. We think that we need that negative voice. We think that we need that for some odd reason. But again, we don't know any better. So there was mm. this study by the National Science Research Foundation that identified that 80% of our thinking, you know, for the general public, 80% sure. of our thinking is negative. Yeah. You know, and so there's that voice saying mean things inside of our head. Or it's keeping us, you know, we stay in this worry place where we're always wondering, well, what if, what if? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, and let me kind of backtrack on Please. this book, you know, because there's a whole backstory. We can get into it, you know, but this book was because my life wasn't working. You know, some people that know me, they see me and they're like, hey, you know, she's got all this stuff going on and she got books and, you know, she's successful. Mm. But my life wasn't working and I wasn't happy and I was tired of it. I just wanted yeah. to be content, you know, something. I wanted something better than to have this negative thinking all the time. Yeah. And so, you know, whenever I approach a topic, there's always the question, you know, like, well, is happiness something that I can go after? Is, is happiness something that I can achieve? And very early on, I discovered that it was something. It could be a goal. You yes. know, it's not that you're just happy, you know, but it's a process and it's something that you cultivate within yourself, yes. you know, by shifting what's going on inside of you. Mm. And that kind of like got me moving forward. It's like, okay, so if I can have this, then what do I need to do to get it? And it actually turned out to be, I joke around, a really simple process mm. as we were talking about of just kind of looking inside. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, I'm having a negative thought. Okay. You know, and just the acknowledgement that yep. you're having a negative thought stops the momentum and slows it down and gives you that pregnant pause yeah. to maybe have a different thought. Absolutely. Or maybe em employ a tool like breathing or tapping or meditating or yep. going for a walk to shift that energy so that you move out of that negative thought. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as, as an anxiety sufferer, that's one of the things that I've had to learn how to do in life is learn to realize when an anxiety attack is coming on, 
when when it's happening, it's way too late. Mm-hmm. It's way too late. I'm in way it too now. Late. I'm in it now. And and learning to recognize the symptomology, learning to recognize like, oh, wait a minute, I'm starting to get really short in some of my answers here. Um, hold on. I, I really feel like I am backed into a corner for no good reason. And I don't know why. Um, but you know, but, but real- that's always the best time to sit yes. there and go, okay, and why? I don't know why. And why? well, maybe, you know, one of the things that I tell people is part of it is about being curious. Yes. And so if you're going, well, I don't know why, then allowing your curiosity to unravel yep. what's going on so that you can understand why and then maybe make a different choice. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I know like my anxiety is sourced whenever something in my life that I care about so much is rocked to a point beyond my control, doctor, um, where, where doesn't matter what my skill set is, there's nothing I can do to, sh- to stop this right now. And like my old therapist used to tell me, okay, so you've recognized the point of anxiety. There's a train in front of you. All you can do is recognize the train and the train's power. That's it. Mm-hmm. Don't try to go through the train. Don't try to beat the train. Don't like all you can do is recognize it, let it pass, and then move forward. That's it. That's all you can do. You know, and and from that point forward, it it was a different situation for me because mm-hmm. yeah, I could walk things back and I could be like Okay, so what has happened in the last little bit or what what news did I get that rocked my internal system so much mm-hmm. that I don't know how to process it, that everything else was was like a 13 year old shifting gears in a Chevy, you know, like right. you, uh, trying you know, to but trying even to get from going that again. point, you can process it back yeah. so that then when the trigger happens, mm. you can be like. Oh, and you don't even have to get on the train. You don't have That's to right. get near the train. That's right. You know, it's kind of like, oh, there's the train. I'm just going to watch it go down the road exactly. and I'm not going to get on. Exactly. And, and that that is just it. At that point, now you've seen the train and you can consent to buy a ticket or not. Exactly. You're no longer just getting smashed by the train every time. <laughs> now you have a point of consent into the system. Where it's exactly. a, and, and a, I have used a turn of phrase with my son, who is about to be seven for the longest time, and that is, <laughs> you can't you can't hit if you don't swing, and and you know baseball reference for effort in life, you're mm-hmm. you're gonna miss. You'll never know if you don't swing. However, it just dawned on me the other day that that utterly has another point of view, which is the point of view of. The consent into the system that I talk about in the show all the time, whether it's the consent into the paranormal, what have you. It's the fact of you are consenting into part of a system. You're consenting into the system of anger. You're allowing yourself to be angry. And by allowing yourself to be angry, you've now relinquished your power to that other person or situation. Exactly. And and now you're angry that you've rel- relinquished your power. So, but only once you're aware. Yeah. You know, I yeah. mean, I've had days. You know, like I've been working on this process for about two years. Mm. You know, and I want to tell people that once I really started working with paying attention to what was going on. Yeah. I saw dramatic results in six months. Absolutely. Dramatic. Absolutely. And, you know, and the rest has just been fine tuning. You know, and and I joke around like you were saying anxiety attack. I just call it bad brain, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm having a bad brain day, you know, and sometimes I sit there and I try to understand why I'm having a bad brain. You know, and sometimes I just own the fact that I'm having a bad brain day, Yeah. you know, and just try to navigate it best I can. Yeah. And 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 it's okay because you're human. And that's mm-hmm. going to happen. We aren't all superhuman. And and believe me, like my addiction, doctor, came, came from the fact this took me years to break down. But I remember in college, I had a I had a Spanish teacher in college. Um, amazing teacher, Dr. Rosensteel. If you're out there listening. Hello. Buenos. <laughs> buenos noches. 
Um, I could tutor people in Spanish and bring them from a D to a B. Heart in a heartbeat. My problem was I could not get myself to class. Didn't matter that I did my assignments. Didn't matter that I could pass a test in Spanish with my eyes closed, hands tongue tied behind my back. I could trill an R, you know. Um, what mattered was the fact that I was starting at a B, C plus by not showing up to class. And when my teacher took me aside and asked me, I was like, you know, some days I wake up and the thought of everything before me and the thought of everything that's just happened in the last day or so is so big. It's so big that I don't know what to do with it. And when I start trying to chase it down, it's like a whirlpool starts and I can't get away from it and I can't stop thinking. And I, I can't, I can't stop going through the permutations of what that different decision may have, may have rooted to, Right. you know? Um, and I get to I'm a point, <laughs> yeah, I get to a point of literal mental standstill where it's like the brakes have ground to a halt. It's, it's that, it, it's that moment in the movie, the flash where you're going so fast that everything around you freezes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what would happen. I, w I would come out of it and look and it'd be like, holy crap, it's 3.30. Mm -hmm. Like, I totally missed school today, you know, just because. But at I was... least it was only one day. I mean, I called that. Yeah, but it happened know, over and hole. over. When it turns into half a semester. <laughs> well, that's what I was going to say. You know, I call it the rabbit hole. And it's yeah. like, you know. It would last a day, a week, a yeah. couple weeks. Yeah. You know, and to me, it's like when I came up out of the hole, it was like, oh, there's mm -hmm. sunshine. Yeah. Oh, there's people. Yeah. Yeah. Whole new <laughs> it was revelations. Just a very novel experience. Well, yeah, but it's the fact of knowing that, recognizing that endpoint and consenting not to be part of the system. Right. Consenting that uh, I only need this much and I need to get out of that situation. I only need this much information to carry forth my task. Anything else would is overwhelming to the system. You well, know? you know, and I made the decision to myself that my happiness was the most important thing to me. And so That's if right. something is happening and it's messing with my energy, if it's making me have lower go. energy and more negative energy, then I need to stop and look around and go, what's going on? Because obviously this is affecting me in a negative way and it's affecting my happiness. And so. Absolutely. You know, then I need to just, you know, get out of it, walk away from it, make a different decision, you know, whatever it, it seems that yeah. I need to do. And sometimes, you know, we need to just ask ourselves, ask our higher selves, ask God, the universe, whatever. What do I need to do now? Or what do I need yeah. to know now so that I can get out of this? Yeah. Yeah. And that's... then listen, that's half of it. And then listen. Yes. No. And, 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 and that, that is, that is honestly where my seminary training came in more handy than ever. Uh, with this, with this gestalt therapy, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, was, was the fact of being still and listening after, you know, because you, you have to be still and listen. If you're not going to be still and listen, then you will reconsent into the system. Like mm -hmm. it, it will happen because you're, you're not letting that moment take root. You know, and how do how do people because this is this is a lot of information and it's beautiful information, doctor. I've, I've when I Thank when you. I went through and read read the PDF that you sent um, of the book, absolutely phenomenal, and so many things that the, the spiritual direction wise, things like that. That spiritual directors when I was in the seminary, formation directors tried to tell me, and I was so young and impetuous that I was not willing to listen mm -hmm. um and had i just shut up man 
<laughs> but you know, there's <laughs> listening to other people, which you know yeah. can be hard depending on who they are. Yes. But then there's listening to ourselves. Yes. You yeah. know, I, w- I was, you mentioned counseling. So I mm. was in counseling sure. and the uh, therapist was like, well, you need to find fun things to do because he, you know, he thinks I'm a workaholic. Yes. So, <laughs> and so I try crocheting and I try to do gardening and I'm like, boring, 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 boring. You know, I like writing, you know, I, I like doing stuff that to other people seem like work, but yeah. It's I'm passionate about it. Yeah. I'm excited about it. Yeah. And so why should it be considered work? So I decided I wasn't going to listen to him about it. And I was just going to listen to what what floats my boat, yeah. what makes me happy. Yeah. And doing stuff that appears like work to other people makes me happy because, you know, I just feel like I pretty much live my life based on hey, Rita, you need to do this, you know, like that inside voice. And it's kind of like after I argue. Yeah, yeah. Okay. (laughs) And I just surrender to whatever that is, you know. And with some people, you know, and one of the things I kind of talk about is relationships, you know, because we can be pretty zen when we're all by ourselves. Mm. And it's when we are interacting with other people that, you know, the, the training wheels fall off and, well, you know, which includes, you know, our personal relationships and yes. our professional relationships yes. and, you know, learning to be able to navigate those is just so important. But yeah. again, it's making yourself the priority. You know, we're not taught to love ourselves. We're not taught to That's make right. ourselves a priority. We're <laughs> when it comes to our inner world, we're not really taught anything. And with how things are these days, you know, they don't even have home ec anymore where they teach you how to like, you know, iron or balance a checkbook or yeah. whatever, you yeah. know? And so I don't know what, where those skill sets are being applied. I mean, You know, people have skill sets, you know, and people can do stuff and school did teach you how to do stuff, but I don't know what they teach anymore. Well, well, and, uh, you know, um, my, my years of psychology, abnormal psychology, teaching children, young children, and especially teenagers have really helped me process adults. Um, and the one thing I've learned over the many years is. Age four to 40, the only difference is by age 40, you should know better than to pull people's hair. Um, a four-year-old is, j- and less invited to do so, um, a, a four-year-old is just as deep as a 40-year-old, and every 40-year-old is just as childish as a four-year-old. <laughs> you know? Um, I have been asked the most confounding questions by a four-year-old where it's like, wow, my man, like, that's existential in a different way. And that's deep, (laughs) Uh, you know, but if you think about it, a lot of our, our road habits, I'm going to use your word, you know, Mm. those little viruses, those programs and scripts that we have inside of us, they all form before we're the age of seven. That's right. You know, and so, and so I think that's why a lot of people, myself included, just make the assumption this is who I am and this is how yeah. I'm going to act in this situation over and over and over again. And yeah. they don't realize that you can change. You can, you can. And the old dogs can learn new tricks. It may take a little while longer, but they can learn. We can learn these things. And, and uh, once again, the first thing it takes much like your subtraction of consent into the system is your consent into the system. Much, much like any addict, you could, you could have 85 interventions until that person decides, okay, that's enough. Um, Exactly. You may not be successful with any intervention because they have not decided that they are ready to change, that they are ready to do something. And it's much like the, much like the false bill of goods, that we are sold with that beautiful four-letter word, the only four-letter word out there, love. 
Mm -hmm. in this culture. And, and yes, it comes down to, do we love ourselves? And we have to remember that love is not an accident. We are taught that we fall in love. Love is a verb, man. That is an action word. You have to love yourself. And to, to tell somebody you complete me is one of the most heavy burdens you could put on somebody. Cause that means that you are not a complete person. Mm -hmm. And do you really want to be in a relationship with an incomplete person? You know? Um, I don't know. I used to be good with it. <laughs> and, and, well, yeah. I used to be good with it, too. And then I wondered why we had problems in our relationship. I wondered why we couldn't openly talk and communicate, you know, and, and be open and be like, hey, like my wife just the other day, doctor, was like, you know, I realized the other day that whenever I get frustrated with you, um, it's because we process information in a different way and I've got to keep bouncing it against the wall. And after about three or four bounces in the game, you're finished and you already know what the end result for your end is going to be. So you just want to go forth and finish what you need to do and not keep bouncing the ball. But I need to keep bouncing the ball because that's how I think, mm -hmm. you know, and it, even that open communication opens up so much for non miscommunication later. You know, but it but, also makes it so that it's kind of like you can interact better yes. because you know that this is how they process and this is how they do things. And I shouldn't get upset about it because that's just them. And, and I'm pretty you know, sure that's who I love. Yeah. Is who that person is, you know, and, and that's just it. Like to expect somebody to change for you. No, no, no. You want them to change for them mm -hmm. so that they can be whole and happy. Because if if you're crawling through a desert and somebody crawls up next to you and says, you got some water, you know, you may not have any to spare. And that that's pretty much emotionally where I think, especially here in the West, especially here in America, doctor, where where most of us are sitting emotionally, we are we are sitting in. A, a literal salt flat of an emotional <laughs> ocean, you know, mm -hmm. like there's, there's zero drinkable water there for most of us emotionally. Um, there, you, we, we are taught to not have contact. We're taught to not hug each other to it's, it's strange to me. It's strange to me. Um, as, well, as you in, know, one of the practices that I've incorporated in mm. the last year or so is to just, you know, if I'm talking to somebody, you know, that is close to me um, to st say at the end of a conversation, I love you. That's right. You know, and it's just, you know, it's not like I'm romantically no. interested in you, but, no. you know, that I love you and I cherish you. That's right. It's the fact of the world would be a different place without you. My world would be a different. I don't think that there is a time in the last 20 years of my life, doctor, that I have either left the presence of a friend or hung up the phone with a friend without saying, I love you. Mm -hmm. There are, there are male friends of mine that I, I full on kiss on the mouth almost when I see them. That's how close we are and how intimate our actual love, our brotherly agape love is mm -hmm. for each other. And, and that's just it. Like we have, we have once again been sold this horrible bill of goods and been told that, <clears throat> well, a love has been sexualized, which means you shouldn't be having it when you're younger. You know, you shouldn't be you shouldn't be experiencing that deep love when you're younger. Um, like I've, I tell my son five times a day that I love him, that I'm proud of him. You know, these these things that I know psychologically men are not told. We aren't told to share these things. We aren't told to tell other people I love you out loud in public. Right. We aren't taught that. And it's one of the or most hug. healthy things in the one of the most healthy, beautiful things in the world. And we're told to ignore it. Literally. As as the the alpha male in a society. You know, but women are taught to people please. That's you know, right. and to take care of everybody else. And then they wonder why. They are codependent or why they don't love themselves because no one said, hey, you need to take care of you That's too. Right. Like, you need to be 
part of the equation. My God. Not just me. You're not supposed to just give it all up. Yep. Yeah. Even, even, even the false bill of goods of, you know, the, the one I bring up regularly is Prince Charming. Wait a minute. Did, didn't that guy come kiss her in her sleep? Is that, Herbert. Th that, that the guy you should be looking for? You know, <laughs> the guy that stalked you down because you lost a shoe? That's who you should be looking for? <laughs> you know, like when you start looking at these things in a modern eye, like some of the many things that girls have been programmed to in a very soft way over the last many decades are like, wow, wow, what well, an expectation. Also taught to like put up with a lot of crap. That's I right. know that in my marriages, I've been married multiple times, that, you know, now you're married and you're supposed to do it for better or worse and they would be worse and it leaves you in this place where you just tolerate a lot of crap. Yeah. You know, and now I'm like, yeah, I'm not really interested in tolerating crap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, well, and once again, you know, because we, we have, we have this entrenched idea. We have this almost hypnotic idea of what we're supposed to be um and, and but it's part of that program it it's is part of those that script absolutely that is put in there you know and then when we don't get it you know when we don't lose weight and get really skinny when we don't yeah. get married and have children when we don't do these things that society says is regular and normal that's right then we just beat ourselves up about it well, and or we won't move forward in x until we complete y yeah yeah and, and put our lives on hold because we're a failure over here, and so until I achieve this, I can't achieve any of the other things that I want in my life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And that's just it, Doctor. The fact that, you know, we we do not understand that we once again have the choice. We, we have the choice from the get-go, um, and that's something that I try to tell my son all the time. All the time is that you you have the choice, son, you know, but there are so many people that can't make the hard choice. And yes. so I'm going to give an example. So I have a Please. girlfriend who has this job. The boss is toxic. It's been toxic. She hates the job, but she makes a lot of money. You know, and it's so hard but she'll complain about it and complain about it. And she's like, but I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And it's like, well, maybe you should go look for a different job. You know, yeah. and she's like, no, I can't do that. You know, and so she cuts that choice off. And even though there have been other opportunities that have presented themselves to her for other employment that was going to pay her yep. good, she has turned it down because she has this feeling of security and won't make the choice and won't step out on the limb. Yeah. To do something different. Well, and, and that's what I was just about to say. Can't or won't. Right. Can't or won't. And and a lot of this truly comes down to that that real understanding and that real stoic understanding of the difference between want and need mm -hmm. in your life. There are very few things that you need. You need you need the things on like the empirical chart of needs. Like you need security, you need shelter, you need food. You need water. You need love and attention from another human being. Like these, these are a good needs. internet connection. A good, good, well, <laughs> yeah, ten up, ten down at a minimum. Um, <laughs> enough to stream. Uh, but but the, these are these are the emotional needs that we have, and you know, as we say on the show all the time, our brains for millennia have been wired for negative reinforcement. They mm -hmm. have been wired to learn because in, in the wild, it's better for you to know fire is hot. It will kill you. Then fire will cook your food and make it savory. You know? Exactly. Um, so we learn more from negative reinforcement faster than we learn from positive reinforcement. So yeah, that's but, why. Yes. But I'm going to put a butt there. Please, put a because it's the same. But if you're priority 
is your happiness. That's right. If that's the priority. You might be making a choice and it might be a white knuckle experience and it might take every bit of gumption that that's you right. have to move forward with that decision. But people that do that 99% of the time in hindsight come to the conclusion that that choice was the best decision they ever made in their lives. Yep. Period. Yep. Hands down. Hands down. My self-employment was imposed upon me. I had a side hustle. I ran to audio. I did sound for clubs and venues and bands and live recordings and things like that. I went to a friend's wedding, came back, had no job. Ended up just having to hustle my way through a month of rent and bills and made mm -hmm. enough, made enough in a few weeks that I had more than rent and bills. And it was like, oh, well, then I got a little like part time thing where I was literally the crossing guard about three blocks away from my house. And between that and just hustling and doing what I do, I was able to pay for everything. Exactly. And once I learned and it's that, something that, it was you love like, to do. It, yeah, no, that's just it. Like I get, I, whenever I'm in a social media group and it's like poorly describe what you do for a living. Um, my, my answer is always, I get, I get paid to travel and play with people's expensive toys. I, I do audio video for a living. All this stuff over my shoulder is what I do. I go out and I hook up wires and hook up gear and make shows happen. It's, it's what I do in my spare time anyway, because I love it. I don't I work a day. I just and say, I just do whatever they tell me to do. That's it. You that's know? it. And, <laughs> and somehow it all works out. And, and, and it that's all just works it. out. You know, once once you take pen to paper and you see what your bare minimum expenses are and you say, you know what, I can be happy and fulfilled if those are met. Mm -hmm. I can be happy and fulfilled if those are met at a bare minimum, you know, um, you'd be surprised how much happier you get because exactly. the rest of it, the rest of it is great, but it's also a point of stress. It's also a point of for some reason, you feel like you need to complete a race that you never had to compete in. You never had to compete with the Joneses, ever. Ever. You were sold that bill of goods. Okay, I'm not really sure where to go with that. So I'm going to shift the topic here. <laughs> well, no, a no. It's just the fact of, you know, it's it, you don't have to compete with everybody else for your happiness. Oh, exactly. What makes somebody happy may not make you happy, and that's okay. You know, but I want to come back, you know, because you were talking about the change part, and I think mm. it's really important. Yeah. Um, you know, so there's the choice. The choice part can be really daunting for some people, you know, especially if you're in a marriage and there's kids, but it's it's dysfunctional. And the choice is I can stay or I can go. And yes. you know, the healthier thing, the thing for your happiness is I need to go. You know, that can be a really daunting decision to have to make. Yeah. Um, but this other stuff we've been talking about, this whole mindfulness thing and, and looking inside, that part is so freaking easy. And the description that I like to use is that being mindful is like dieting. You know, so dieting is easy. You just don't eat a lot of food. That's mm. dieting, period. And if you have a bad day and you eat the entire bag of Oreo cookies, you don't beat yourself up. You just go, wow, I just ate that entire bag of Oreo cookies. Well, you know what? Tomorrow I'm going to be better. And you just kind of get back up on your wagon That's and right. you start being mindful again. And so, you know, the bag of cookies is like you're having a bad brain day and it's okay, you know. But as you work through this process, and I said earlier, you know, in six months, I noticed a distinct change, you know, and now that it's been over a year, I mean, I used to have bad brain a lot, a lot. And now it's kind of like maybe once every couple of months and it yeah. might last for a couple of hours and even that, you know, so I've been kind of going through this process with, you know, like I wrote the book, I'm working on my journey. And so I have this girlfriend and I've been using her as an example who would have panic attacks 
Mm. Like to the point that she would be throwing up panic sure. attacks. Yep. Yep. I'm there. And I mentioned to her the other day, you know, like if something happened to her house and we think there was like some weird past life thing or I don't even know, but if something would happen to her house, she would just go into a full blown meltdown, be throwing up, you oh, know, man. can't get out of bed, blah, 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 blah. And she had something happen at her house, like a water leak or something and no panic attack and no throwing up. And and it was it was a nothing burger for her. I mean, she called her son, she got it fixed, and I reflected that back to her. I said, you know, if this had been six months ago, you would yeah. have been all over the place and you would have been beside yourself. So I want you to validate that's where you were, but this is where you are now. That's right. And I think part yeah. of it is just taking stock of wow, if somebody did this and normally it would make me have a heart attack. And now yeah. the same, you know, like my webpage stuff, you know, you sit there and you tell me like, oh, this is broken on your webpage. You know, it would make me, <laughs> the world is coming to an end uh, and yeah. everything mm -hmm. needs to stop and I need to address this yep. now. Yeah. Now I'm kind of like, oh yeah, you know, and I get it up and running and you know, I'll fix it later, you know, yeah. but it's not all this anxiety tied yes. to it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I will admit a lot of mine is panic like that. It's, and it's just the fact of when somebody mentions something, I feel like it suddenly has to be top of the plate mm -hmm. um, when it could wait a day or two, you know, if, if I really stop and think about it and, you know, what, what's interesting in the, in the last few minutes, we have you for about 15 more minutes, doctor. I, okay. I want to explore the concept of how this gets broadcast because, you know, we, once again, a lot of, a lot of our stuff is rote habit. A lot of our stuff is even, even down to the point of mitochondrial, you know, it, it is epigenetic. Our, our, our tortures, our, our wounds can come from epigenetic damage from things that happened to our parents. There was a huge study that was just done a year or so ago with uh, Vietnam vets showing the fact that their children had the markers for PTSD. Really? Yes. Huh. Yes. That they had epigenetic markers for PTSD, same as their parents who had been in Vietnam. And that it's a, it's a fantastic showing of the fact that trauma can be passed on mm -hmm. these things can be passed on and it's not just a psychological passing on you know but but once again we can change our epigenetics we can change that through diet through behavior all kinds of things so there is hope even though it goes so, beyond our mind so one of the things that i found fascinating so just finding out that i could change me inside and be happy you know, like yeah. more, than, more than on Thursday between three and four o'clock um, <laughs> was this fact. And, and I think you'll appreciate it. And mm. so a little biochemistry. Sure. And so inside of us, you know, there are cells and on the cells, there are something that's called receptor sites. And so the receptor site and, and okay, hang on. And so when something happens, our body releases hormones. They're either pleasure hormones like dopamine or they're stress hormones like cortisol. And those hormones are released and they go to the cell and they act as like a key. And they go into the receptor site, which is like a lock, and it either activates or disactivates the cellular function. So it turns it on or turns it off depending yeah. on what it's supposed to do. So with just that little piece of information, so if you are constantly living with anxiety or constantly being panicked or constantly having a, a bad inner critic or have yep. worrying all the time and living on stress hormones, when your cells reproduce, the cells actually reproduce with more receptor sites to accommodate the stress hormones better. That's and right. so then something happens and your body very quickly responds because you just got a rush of stress hormones. Yeah. But as you sit there and start becoming more mindful, then as you start having more gratitude and as you start loving the world and loving people and you create more cells, the ones that 
take in the stress hormones start to diminish and the ones that take in the good feeling That's hormones right. get more. Yeah. You know, and our cells replace themselves every 120 days. And so every three months, That's you right. can have this giant shift in who you are. That's right. Absolutely. And that's just it. And, and once again, as your book gets into, we broadcast that out into the world oh around us. You know, and, and that is something that I've brought, brought up for years is the fact of we are responsible for every vibration that we drag into a room. Mm hmm. We may not intend that vibration, but we need to be ready to be accountable for it, you know? Well, and, and people don't understand that. I mean, you know, I work as a, a intuitive, a psychic person. And so yeah. when you're doing a reading for someone, that's what you're interpreting is that vibration that's that right. they're emitting, period. And, um, <clears throat> And so, but we don't realize that we're projecting, but I think we've all had the experience where, you know, we go somewhere and, and you see like this guy over there and they just got like funky energy and you yeah. can feel their funky energy. So we know it because we've experienced it, yeah. but we don't own it. And so I just like to pose this question to the listeners. What are you projecting? Are you projecting a Hallmark movie or is it more like a horror movie, Yeah, you know, that everybody else is picking up, you know, right. and it's not that it's that, you know, like, you know, there's our base being, this is who we are when we're in the present moment and we're not triggered. And then there's who we are when we are. So like my late husband came from a lot of trauma, great guy, super great guy until he was triggered, which thank God wasn't all that often, mm. but you could feel, literally feel the bad mojo coming yeah. off of his body. And yeah. it was like, wow, yeah. I'm glad that you're only like that way, like one day a year. Yeah. Because <laughs> if it was a regular thing, this would mine, not be happening. Mine is the same way. And whenever, whenever mine releases, like it's... It's rough. Ugly. <laughs> Doctor, it ain't pretty. And, uh, you know, I'm normally complimented on my vibe, normally complimented on you're so easy to talk to, everything else. But, whew, man, when when it is set off in the wrong direction, um, it, it is something that I have to be fully aware of, you mm -hmm. know, and because, like, I have, I've, I've, I've honestly a few times been afraid of blind rage in my life. Um, because of it. Mm -hmm. And, and it's something that once again, if you don't recognize it in yourself, then you're not going to be able to do anything about it. You know, you know, but even with people that, you know, I'm going to say have a rage disorder, but you know, sure. like, uh, don't emotionally regulate well. You know, where they can That's go a from very zero kind to way psycho to put that about in, me. In, Thank in a you. second, <laughs> you know, it really helps them. Yes. A lot, you know, because it it makes it so that, you know, where the peer ends is, you know, well, shorter, longer. Yes. I don't know. You know, yeah. so that you're not falling off the pier quite so fast into that crazy place. Yeah, yeah. And and you know what's interesting is along with all of this, um is is the fact that to bring it back to relationships is the idea that um we don't mean to blow up on the ones that we love. It's just the fact of they're the only ones that we feel emotionally secure enough around to let them see that, you know, interesting to, point. To, That's to, very true to open up in that way, so to speak, and to, and to show that vulnerability. And also the fact of, you know, we just get so used to them being there and not being a judgmental mind. Mm -hmm. And and that can be burdensome in and of itself, even on the loved one, you know, um, because, yeah, you you may be blowing up because they're the pressure valve you can release around. But should you be doing that? You know, but sometimes it it's you know, we've talked about this throughout. It's like, OK, I'm blowing up. But what was the trigger? And was that a valid reason 
to get upset. You know, a lot of the times it's like, it's the assumptions that we make and the programming that we have that make us feel bad or make us whatever inside. That's right. And, and it has absolutely nothing to do with the other person. Yeah. Steamy is the word that we use in our house. Steamy? Feeling steamy. (laughs) You know, it's, it's, it's somewhere between anger and shame. Uh Uh-huh. You know? And like self disappointment mm-hmm. that you're even feeling the anger and shame, <laughs> steamy. Uh, uh, steamy. That's okay. that's how we put it. You know, it's like I'm sorry I was steamy earlier. You know, um, I was busy processing the situation, uh, but that's just it. And you you have to love yourself enough to understand that you are human. You're going to make mistakes. You're you're going to have emotional outbursts. It's going to happen, you know? But there's also the part of being big enough to say, you know, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to crank at you. See, I, I'm That's more right. cranking. That's you know, right. I didn't mean to crank at you earlier. You know, this was going on and, and I'm sorry. And being yeah. the bigger person and owning your own emotions that yeah. you're Putting on other people. Well, and letting somebody know that I'm sorry I was triggered. You aren't responsible for my trigger. I'm responsible for the reaction to my trigger. And I'm sorry mm-hmm. for the bad reaction. Exactly. I like the way you put that. I like the way you put that. You know, because the world is not responsible for our triggers. If you're that triggered, maybe don't go out into the world. Or if you're triggered by that much stuff. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and and work on that until you can do it. But but you have to remember that the world is not responsible for your triggers. We we have to be that mental martial artist that is is ready to kind of deal with it and, and to move past it and to understand that we can move past it emotionally. Um, well, and I think that's one of the, you know, not the core message of the book, but a big message of the book is... That we can move through it, you know, and it is possible and we're not stuck. Yes. Yes. But the biggest thing is taking responsibility because it was me all along. That's right. (laughs) That's right. And it's the fact of, you know, um, because you allowed yourself to get into that mentality. And and once you allow yourself to slip into the other mentality and to keep slipping into it. You'd be surprised how comfortable the shoes are, folks, um, and how well, easy you know, it is to I, run in this, them. This just came to me. You know, so many of us, and I'm going to use this word, live based on ego and what society says is the right thing to do Absolutely. or not the right thing to do. And we don't really rely on me. What do I want? What feels good to me? And it all kind of starts with taking ownership of yourself and taking again, ownership of your happiness and, and letting that guide your life and move you forward versus I need to have a big house. You know, I need to have this new car, you know, those are ancillary things. So there are so many people that have all this money and have all of this stuff, but they're miserable. That's right. And And what's the point? Yep. Yep. One of the, one of the, one of the first hip hop songs I ever remember I fell in love with and I'm still in love with. Um, it's Love's Gonna Get You by Boogie Down Productions. And it starts off with, so you're in love with that girl over there. So you're in love with that chain. You're in love with that car. You know, and and that's kind of the lesson is the fact of love's gonna get you. At some point, it'll come back and bite you in the butt. You're gonna do something horrible to get that chain. You're gonna do something horrible to attain that woman or put that woman through something emotionally that she doesn't need to be put through because you're trying to be happy through her instead Mm -hmm. of for her, you know? Um, And it's, it's an interesting turnaround. The fact of happiness is different than fulfillment. Yes. Happiness is different than fulfillment. You have to be fulfilled in order to be happy. Well, you know, and when you put yourself into the equation, it takes you out of victim mode and it gives you your power back. You know, now people can't do this to you. Yes. You know, 
It's That's like, right. I mean, they might try to do it to you, but you can choose to not let them or walk away or whatever that thing is versus just laying there and taking it and being the beat, you know? Yeah. Being the victim. Being the victim. Being the victim. Not even playing the victim, being the victim. And and that's just it. It, it really is the fact of taking your power back and understanding that... Uh, you have some. <laughs> yeah, that you have all of it. That it's all yours. Every mm -hmm. bit of it. Whatever isn't yours, you have consented to give to somebody else. Or not take out at all. Yeah. Absolutely. Doctor, this this has been an amazing conversation. We yes, need it to has. we need to have this more regularly. Um okay. <laughs> because it, it, it's one of those this this is one of the topics. I know we talk a lot about paranormal on this show. We talk a lot about um cryptids, things like that, but until you understand this, it's really hard to understand your experience as that cog in the universal machine. It's exactly. really hard. It's really hard to understand that you have such a beautifully greater purpose than that nine to five existence, you know, and, and the, the nine to five existence may be what you have to have in order su to subsist, but that is not your existence. And so That's many not people who you are get stuck there. And it's, fascinating because many i have so many clients it's like they're mm. in their 50s and now they're discontent with their job yeah and they don't like it anymore and i said well i get that and they're like but i can't quit and not like the employer but the work that they've done for the yeah. last 25 years yeah and i i just tell them i'm like but shift the focus that's right you know that's what you do to make money and pay the bills and you let go of your attachment to it. Yeah. And you just do it because they give you a lot of money. Yeah. And then shift the focus on to what do I want and where do I want to go? And so if you're 55 and you start on that process, by the time you're ready to retire, you probably have all kinds of hobbies and all kinds of things that give you happiness so that when you do retire – you have something to do because That's there are right. so many people, they, they, they retire and they're like, well, I don't know what to do with myself. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And once, once, once that happens, the mental acuity goes rapidly, yes. you know, and, and you, you can, it, it's a forever situation, folks. It's a beautiful eternal world out there. Your energy will <laughs> never, ever be destroyed. It only changes form. Um, Doctor. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you so much for the amazing conversation today and the beautiful message of, dang, it was me all along because, <laughs> oh, my God, it's so true. It's us 90% of the time, doctor. Yes, sir, let, it is. Let everybody know where they can go uh, to pick up your books, where they can go for sessions with you, where they can go uh, to find out the latest and greatest from Dr. Rita Louise. Sure. So uh, you can get my book, Dang, It Was Me, all along at all the regular booksellers. Actually, all of my books are available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if you'd like an autographed copy, um, you can go to my website, soulhealer.com, and any book that I send out always comes autographed. Um, if somebody is interested in getting a private consultation with me to, you know, it's a practice in having a mindfulness buddy can be mm. very helpful. Yeah. Um, you know, go to my website, use the contact form. That's the best way of uh, reaching out to me. And, um, you know, but one of the things that I want to share with your listeners. So every Thursday night on, and I'm going to use the YouTube. So every Thursday night at seven o'clock PM central time, I do a, uh, a live stream where I offer on air psychic readings. And so you are welcome to come and join us. If you go to my YouTube page, which is just energy radio, just energy radio on YouTube, you can join the chat. You can ask questions. You can hang out. I think tonight's topic is going to be um, intention because there's always awesome. some 
I always start with a topic and then it just kind of ha- takes on a, a life of its own. So that, that, yes, <laughs> that that's exactly <laughs> how it should be. That's what it a conversation is supposed to be, whether you're having it with yourself, the universe, or with a guest, doctor. Yes, sir. Um, so thank you so much for your time again. This has been a well, beautiful thanks conversation. thanks so much for having me, and I'm so glad that we reconnected. Oh, this yeah, most cool. definitely. It's been a long time, and, uh, you know, know, once again, we need to we need to definitely have you on much more regularly. Uh, please, okay. please do hold the line real quick uh, while we close things out with the audience. Um, okay. While you are online checking out everything from the amazing Dr. Rita Louise, folks, do not forget to stop on by Curious Realm. CuriousRealm.com is where you can find all of the episodes. That's where you can like, follow, subscribe, share. That's where you can find the store at CuriousRealm.com forward slash store where we have all of the video series, all of the classes, courses, books, things like that from all of our guests embedded right there. We also have CuriousRealm.com forward slash video where you can follow not only our YouTube, but all of the guests YouTube as well, like Dr. Rita Louise. So stop on by and check that out at CuriousRealm.com forward slash video and all new Curious Realm Roku app. It has not only all of the episodes, all of the live stuff, everything else, but it also has all of the binaural beat and meditation music that I make for uh, music therapy, things like that. So stop on by, check that out. If you're a Roku user, just simply go to the app market and search for Curious Realm. Thank you so much as always, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you so much for your time, your patience, your open hearts and minds. Without those, there is no conversation. Without the conversation, humanity does not march forward. So remember, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and stay curious. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of The Curious Realm. Stay tuned for more guests, forbidden topics, and hidden truths. Follow us on social media by searching Curious Realm. To download the official Curious Realm app and view the Knowledge Vault, or become a sponsor of Curious Realm, visit our website at CuriousRealm.com. Curious Realm is available on your favorite podcast and video services, as well as KPNL Radio, APR TV, and the Curious Realm app for Roku devices. Curious Realm is a proud member of the Ground Zero Media and Aftermath Media family of podcasts. For more great shows and members-only content, visit groundzeromedia.org and aftermathmedia.com today. Thanks for listening. Stay curious. And remember, the other side is always watching.